this is the specimen of urinary bladder the urinary bladder is the muscular reservoir of urine it lies in the lesser pelvis in the anterior part of the lesser pelvis just behind the pubic symphysis the size shape and position of urinary bladder varies according to the amount of urine it contains when empty the urinary bladder is tetrahedral in shape as is as in this specimen and when it is filled with urine it expands and extends up into the abdominal cavity the capacity of urinary bladder is about 120 to 320 ml with a mean capacity of 220 ml there is desire to micturate when the bladder is filled after 220 ml and usually the bladder is emptied when filled to about 250 to 300 ml but still there is a capacity up to 500 ml after which pain sensation start beyond 500 ml now this is the empty urinary bladder of the male the empty urinary bladder is tetrahedral in shape it has an apex this is the apex apex face forwards behind is the fundus or the base which is directed posteriorly then there is a superior surface facing up and there are two inferolateral surfaces left and right inferolateral surfaces then there are four borders this is the anterior border here which separates the two inferolateral surfaces from each other then these are the lateral borders the lateral border separates superior surface from inferolateral surface and then there is a posterior border here which separates the superior surface from the fundus or base the apex is attached to umbilicus by median umbilical ligament which is remnant of embryonic uracus coming to the base or the fundus in the female so this is the urinary bladder in the female where this is the apex and behind this is the base or the fundus it is related to the uterine cervix and vagina in the males the upper part of the fundus is separated from the rectum by recto vesical pouch and the lower part of the fundus is related to the seminal vesicles one on each side and medial to seminal vesicle these are the ampulla of vas deferens the triangular interval here between the two ampulla of the vas separated from rectum behind by the recto vesical fascia or fascia of denenvilliers so here behind we can see there are seminal vesicles literally and medial to them is the ampulla of the vas deferens so this is the male urinary bladder we can see here the vas deferens crossing the ureter here from above lateral to medial side this is the ureter which is entering into the bladder and this is the vas deferens then there is a neck neck is the lowest and most fixed part of the bladder it lies about 3 to 4 cm behind the lower border of pubic symphysis in the male as we can see here the neck is related with the prostate gland and in the female the neck is related with the pelvic fascia 
From the neck starts the internal urethral orifice, that is the beginning of urethra, which passes through the prostate. So that is the prostatic part of the urethra. We can see the opening here, that is the urethra passing through the prostate. So that is the neck. Now the superior surface in the male, the superior surface is completely covered with peritoneum, above which there will be the coils of intestine and sigmoid colon. But in the female, the greater part of the superior surface is covered with peritoneum except for a small part here near posterior border which is not covered with peritoneum. The peritoneum from superior surface is reflected to the isthmus of the uterus here and forms a pouch known as a vasico-uterine pouch. So this is the vasico-uterine pouch here in the female. Now coming to the inferolateral surfaces, the inferolateral surfaces will be related anteriorly with the posterior surface of the pubic bones, retropubic fat, puboprostatic ligaments, levator ani muscle and obturator internus muscles. In the females, the relation of the inferolateral surfaces are the same except that instead of puboprostatic ligament, there will be pubocervical ligaments. So these are the inferolateral surfaces, this superior surface, the apex behind will be fundus or base and lower down there will be neck, this is the prostate gland. Now when the bladder is filled with urine, it expands, so the two inferolateral surface become the anterior surface and the other surface will be the posterior surface. So the bladder is ovoid in shape in which the apex will face upwards towards the umbilicus and the lowermost part will be the neck. Now coming to the internal features of the urinary bladder. In the interior of urinary bladder, we can see the mucosa which is irregular. The greater part of the mucosa is irregular because of the loose attachment of the mucosa with the muscular coat. But there is a small triangular interval here in the lower part of the fundus in which the mucosa is smooth because of the firm attachment of the mucosa with the underlying muscular coat. This triangular region is known as trigon. The trigon has three angles. Here superiorly, laterally on each side, this is the opening of the ureter, one here and one this opening. So here we can see this is the ureter which open here at the superolateral angle. The opening of ureter on each side they form the two angles superiorly whereas inferiorly here this is the internal urethral orifice which is downwards and forwards. So this triangular area is known as trigon. The base of the trigon here is formed by interuretric ridge or bar of Mercier because of the continuation of the inner longitudinal muscle coat of the ureter. Here in the lower part, just behind and above the internal urethral orifice, there is an elevation known as uvula vasaiki. The uvula vasaiki is produced because of the median lobe of prostate gland and if the median lobe of prostate gland is enlarged, it will obstruct the urethra and distort it, giving rise to condition that is benign prostatic hypertrophy or BPH. So this is the trigon which develops from the absorbed mesonephric ducts. So these are the external and internal features of the urinary bladder.